Okay, everyone, are you all there? Just type in a yes that you're here um, and you can hear and see me, even though you may not want to see me because I don't want to see myself at this point. Um, so listen, everybody, guess what? You're going to get this session and another session because I want to make sure that everybody gets 100% of what you were here for. So you can see me and hear me. Yes, Aya? Oh, mm, thank you. Okay. So we had a few bumps in the road. I understand things happen. I know my hair is a hot mess. Just let it go because whatever. But um, I realize that people are here from all over. My name is Monica Gilliam, and I do um, um, intellectual property rights uh, for artists and authors. And so I have a lot of information that I want to share with you guys. You said, is there an issue with the sound? I don't believe there's an issue with the sound. Ms. Lady Wilson said that you all can hear me. I can, we can hear you, uh, Monica. This is Crystal. Oh, hi, Crystal. Now I'm glad I can hear everybody too. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. It is now 1127, and that means we've lost 30 minutes, but it's okay. Because when I usually do the class, I like to go around to see who I'm working with, what level of, uh, of information people are on, so that I can deliver things that's for each individual. So if you, I know, am I talking loud? That's okay. I'm putting it down. in the chat for you. Huh? I'm putting the information in the chat. So I'm asking them to put their information in the chat so that we can help you out. Okay, good. Okay, so we're going to do a redo of this presentation. And it's only right and it's only fair that this is a redo because there were probably 14 people or maybe more registered for this class and people want to be able to meet people and interact and so that's important and um so the other so let's get started okay and then i'm going to give you guys a preview of what the whole class is going to be because you have a lot of information that you need now I don't like to be redundant and I don't like to give people things that you can get on your own. But sometimes some people don't know exactly where to get the proper information from. Now, at this point, I'm kind of glad that I didn't set up to do a whole PowerPoint presentation on this platform because it was enough with just trying to navigate it. So I had already decided that I was going to send you this stuff through the chat box. That way you'll have the links. So I see I have Marcella here, I have Aya, I have Crystal, I have Lady uh, Wilson here, and I have Miss Sonia, I have Nina, I have Clint. Thank you guys so much for coming. Now, what's important, the first thing in uh, protecting our intellectual property right is privacy, okay? Um, so since privacy is very important, and that's the first um, pillar of protecting your right, privacy and confidentiality, this is a public forum here and i can't um i i can't ensure that your personal private information is not breached because this is not private if we were in a classroom a physical brick and mortar classroom i would ask everyone to literally go ahead and turn your telephones um off or I would ask you, please do not record. But this session is being recorded. And so for that reason, I want you guys to remember the first thing to protecting your intellectual property rights is to know one, who you're talking to, who you're sharing it with, and know that anything that's out into um, a virtual electronic medium is, um, no longer protected as being private. So that's the first thing. Um, if you're in a session with a group of people, then your information is now out in the open. And in fact, if you see the stuff behind me, technically this is considered published um, because it's out there in the public. And so um, there are three 
now maybe four. And so I'm going to navigate away from this to go to um, my notes to bring it up so that I can give it to you guys. Okay. I hope I'm not talking too loud because normally what I do in the session is I ask everyone to go around and share um, project is so that um, I can uh, tailor the presentation to um, what you're looking to do. So if we could at least while I'm bringing this up, one at a time, you guys, don't tell specifically exactly, um, like don't give any anything that you don't want breached, but just tell me what kind of project you're working on so that I can, and we can all know who we're talking to. I'm gonna start with Crystal Mitchell. Okay. Um, I can actually just tell you, but I am work. I have a podcast. I have three podcasts actually, and so um, uh, and they broadcast three, uh, weekly. And so that would probably be my that is my intellectual property, myself and my co-host. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, you're so what that would fall under, and this is how I like to kind of do things is uh, feed off of other people. What your focus, I believe, one of your main focuses, Miss Crystal, is going to be trade secrets. Okay, I'm going to put this into the chat. Oh, boy. Oh, let me not. See, I was almost about to send. This is how we got to be careful. That's crazy. I was almost about <laughs> to send something that I didn't want to send. Wow. Okay, let's try that again. So one of the things that you are going to have to uh, look out for, it did the same thing, is a trade secret. So I'm not going to send this because it's sending it through. I'll HP put trade email. secret. Huh? So, yeah. You just put it, type it in your chats over there. In the That's chats, what I was going to do. Can... So there are four types oh, okay. of intellectual properties that we're going to concentrate on is trade secrets, trademarks, copyrights, and patents. And every year I always ask Dr. Milligan if I can kind of dive in a little deeper. And she always reminds me that let's just start with the baseline of where people are uh, uh, because we have a lot of people who are beginners. But then I like to think we have other people now as technology has moved on, people aren't just beginners. We have people in various stages, which Crystal has just pointed out. So one of the things that Crystal, we want to do when we get together again is I'm going to talk about some trade secrets because since you do a podcast what you don't want to breach is your trade secret okay now let me go to um lady wilson i believe you're still with us tell us the kind of project you're working on if you're still there well then let me go with Cheryl Spivy. I see Cheryl Spivy is still there. What kind of project without breaching any of your trade secret are you working on? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> what I would like to say is I want to get off this being pregnant with the baby like Dr. Rosie was talking about earlier today. I'm sitting on a, a book that I have uh, that is a real story. And I was going to listen to some other people today, but then when I read your bio about protecting your writing rights, etc., I thought this might be come. So that's what that's what and I, I listen, I think any artist uh, and an artist is could be a person that writes, sings, storytells, shares personality, um, does radio, TV, um, any of you know. So we're all artists in the entertainment and intellectual world. There are all rights that we have to protect, and so you're right. This session is now down to only 20 minutes and I want to give everyone a full hour. So what I'm doing right yeah. now is taking down, surveying the audience, which is what I normally do in the presentation so I can see yeah. who I'm talking to, so I can pick out certain key uh, parts, information that will be pertinent to everyone's project. So Thanks. you as a writer, you said that you're looking to write a book. And so 
one of the things that you're going to be looking at, I do believe, is that you need to know how to do your copyrights of your book. And so you will need to know that releasing your book before it is um, finished, you're, you would be breaching it. But one a breach meaning um, giving it away. Um, yes, you know, yes. giving it away. So the important thing that as a writer, you need to know, and I'm going to expand on that later, is that the get away from the notion of um, what's called the poor man's copyright. A lot of people believe that you all you have to do, and I have to address it every year, is that is to just write it down, mail it to yourself, and now it is, uh, uh, that's your copyright. So here's the deal, and one of the first things with uh, copyrights is that any time something is fixed on a permanent medium, then you already have a veil, you already have copyrights protection. And a, a fixed permanent medium is, it could be written on a wall. It could be on a monogram. It could be a piece of paper or a book. It could be written on your computer. Um, so that is the beginning of your copyright protection is something that is fixed on a permanent medium, but not all things that is fixed on a uh, medium is considered copyrightable. Um, and so I'm going to expand more into that. But the first thing I want you guys to do where it comes to copyrights is knowing where to get your information from. I know if you type into your um, browser how to get my copyrights, so many legal Zooms going to come up and all that. You're not going to need to do that because you're going to know how to complete and do your copyright application. What you want to do is go to the and now I can't talk and write at the same time. <laughs> the website that you would use is the United States Copyright Office. And what I want you guys to do is to, when we reschedule our classes, that you're going to go to the frequently asked questions. Now I did get the link so that I could put it on here for you guys. And let me see if I can bring it here and put it into the chat box here, okay? you um monica are you do you yes. have a booth as well today i do i have a booth but i'm not i'm i you know what this is we're in the middle of this horrible pandemic my mother just called me and told me that one of our dear friends is literally on a ventilator and oh, one of my high. dear friends just passed away when we were doing our training session and so this, yeah here's a link right here that i want everyone to get bring that link down you're going to be ahead of the session that we do. It's the www.right.gov backslash help backslash FAQ. This is something that you can all do for yourself. Which Thank is, you. Yes, which is get, if you go through the frequently asked questions, that's going to save me time of ask, answering some of the most frequently asked questions Um and I don't want to waste anybody's time. So there's the first Thank link. The you. next link that I want to give you guys where it comes to copyright, I should have given you this first, and that's okay. I'm slowing down because I'm feeling more calm, is this right here. It's copyright.gov. So take these two links down, your copyright.gov, save yourself the time and money from going through legal Zoom. And now you're going to go to that and then you're going to go to your frequently asked questions. You will be able to complete your own uh, copyright application. But now hear this. It's important to complete the application correctly. And so perhaps if there, since we're a group here, perhaps there's a group of beginners that want to complete the application in the class, since we're going to do a redo, because I'm just giving you an overview, you're going to be ahead. We're going to, uh, I'm going to be able to point you to which application you're going to be able to start with. Because guess what? The application's only $35. So now people ask, do I need to complete and register my copyright works? Yes, you 
do because now that things are so available to people and the world is so small, people can go onto your website, for God's sake, grab your stuff, copy it and put it out there. And who's to know? And so registering your copyright, your, registering your work, um, not only um, gives you your protection, because you already have your protection once your work is fixed on a permanent medium, meaning once you've inscribed it, you already, it is already copyrighted, but you don't avail yourself of the benefits of the copyrights. In other words, the benefit is that if you are infringed, if someone steals your property, now you're able to sue them to, um, for damages and also get uh, attorney fees. But here's the caveat to that. That's not going to kick in until the work is registered. So mm. let's say um, Miss Candace has, uh, you can find me on Amazon, very good Amazon, uh, Candace, the good for spamming. You, we can find Candace on Amazon at this willrich.com and now somebody if you have a preview of your material on amazon how easy is it for someone to swipe copy and paste it and use your material and by the way do you guys know what is considered when you've uh, when you've taken and lifted someone's material what is that called plagiarizing yes and how many words does it take Ah, it's like seven, seven, so a whole seven sentence, consecutive words, right? About so, a seven, a sentence, right? So, if you so someone could take your material, plagiarize you, put it on their site, you won't know it, and now they're using your material. And so, yes, you can sue them, but you're not going to get damages. It, the damages won't kick in until the first date of your registration. So mm. that's why it's important for you to register your copyright. Thank you very material. much for that information. Thank huh? you. Thank, thank you very much for that information. Right. So that's thank why you want to register. And by the way, when you register, you actually have to send them a copy of your of the of the product of the of, let's say mm -hmm. if it's your. So I'm going to go to someone else. We have uh, now feel much more calmer. We still have time here, Karen. Johnson, are you there? And she may be in the, she may be watching you. So uh, Karen, if you can put your information in the chat room. Uh, okay, uh, I see Crystal. But Karen, if you're there, or I, I wanted to hear from Karen. Um, she was there 10 minutes ago. I wanted to hear what type of project. So, so far we have a podcast. Let's say if you're doing a radio show, we want to be able to go over that when we have our next session. We have people who are writing books. They're pregnant. They're ready to deliver that baby. And now when you deliver the baby, you don't want somebody to steal your baby and run off. You want to know how you can protect your baby. I want to give uh, the, that information. And who else do we have in here? I want to hear about what kind of project you're in so that when we have our next session, we can get to that. Is there Karen here? Lady Wilson, what about you? You're the one that's doing the book, right? Oh, do I have to unmute them? No, no, she they're they're watching you. They're not in the session. So uh, she says she's in the chat. So you can just talk to Lady Wilson and then she can respond by chat. Oh, okay, Lady Wilson. Let's see if Lady Wilson is going to, oh yeah, you're here in the chat. Lady Wilson, what type of project are you working on? We're gonna give her a few seconds because we wanna address, I see Cheryl Spivy and I can see Tavon King. If Tavon King wants to um, say what your project is, and I usually spend a few minutes going around the classroom to hear what kind of projects we're working on. Tavon King, are you able to speak or are you mute there, muted? Or Cheryl, did you have a question? Let me take someone's question. Let's do that. I, I'm trying to get to the chat so I can just say thank you, but I can't. Well, I why can't don't you tell us? You just tell us what your project is. I'm the one that you just spoke to about writing the book oh, and being speaking. pregnant. 
Yes, okay. I was I was the one that you were talking about the importance of copywriting. Okay. So okay. I pretty much got my information for now. I like that for now. Okay. Thank you. Devon, yes, you thank have to take yourself. Devon has to take herself off a of mute. Look down at the microphone and click that, and you will be off a of mute. Okay. Okay, so in the, the first thing that I gave you guys, because a lot of people, one of the biggest issues, and I'm spending more time, and we will spend more time on copyright, are, are questions that you can already answer, um, that you can get answers to without me rushing through it, and something that you'll have. And I gave you guys the two links, the copyright.gov and the frequently asked question. I told you guys to click on those two links. You'll, you'll be ahead of the class. The next thing is when you come to the class, you're going to have your project. You're going to want to know what application that you actually use so that you can complete your application. Now, there is a pre-application um, that you can also complete, like uh, the, the are pregnant, those who are pregnant with your project. Um, there is a pre-application that you can actually do, and so I'll show you guys how to do that. Now, uh, the, we t um, briefly for a second talked about trade secrets because um, we have uh, people here that are doing their podcasts. And um, I'm going to now just quickly because we only have a few minutes and I just know that there are some people out there that want to perhaps uh, consider a trademark because copyright is not trademark, right? Right. Right. And so in your FAQs, you can find out all the things that you can copyright. But um, now you want to know, do you need to also trademark something? And trademarking is important if you have um, for a product or a service that you want to ident be identified as. Let's say, for instance, and I'll use me as an example, um, here in the top corner, you see my butterfly. So ever since I've been in business, which has been since 1991, I have used this butterfly. But now I want to ask you guys, how many of you think that that butterfly is protected? Can because it be it's a protected? How many people have butterflies? Many. Many people have butterflies. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> Right? Right. They're everywhere. So how can I claim that as mine? Right? Yes. Okay. That butterfly is mine because it's a unique butterfly. Trademarks have to be something that's very unique, that is the identifier of your product or service. The reason why this butterfly is mine and unique is because this butterfly is marked by the specific colors, and this is how trademark goes. It goes to, you have to claim the specific color, the specific shape, the specific pattern with regards to very specific to what it is identifying. Let's take, for instance, and I'm just picking up stuff that I just happen to have, uh, uh, maybe my glasses, Triskworski or I didn't, I, you know, that's this glass, these yeah. eyeglasses. Their trademark is a swan. It looks like it's a swan, right? Mm -hmm. So then that's their trademark. But you would say, there's swans everywhere. How can they claim this? Because they're claiming this as, their, as an identifier to their mark for the um, product of eyeglasses. When you go into a trademark um, application, you would be overwhelmed with all the different categories uh, of your mark. And so you will have to claim a right to a very specific uh, product or service that fits in a specific category. And this is for uh, publishing books. And let's say, for instance, it's a uh, Coca-Cola, or let's go with a uh, Nike, because trademarks don't have to just be a symbol. It could be a phrase. Um, let's do it is uh, their trademark for um, Nike. Um, it is uh, um, in the category of, and they probably, because they have so many attorneys, they probably have tied up clothing, 
um, athletic wear, um, anything that has to do with athletics. So we're going to dive into more of that, the difference between copywriting your project and trademarking your project, whether you need to do one or both. When we reschedule this event, then I want you guys to bring your product or service, what you have, and we're going to talk about whether or not you're going to be able to either copyright it or trademark it and which application you use. And I think that that's the best gift that I can give you guys um, or, uh, or, or a bit of wisdom uh, that I can give you guys for uh, the value of you coming here and uh, uh, participating in this event because you want it to be I like to just you know talk about you know go through the list of all this i want it to be something that you guys will be able to take away and and, and take home and and apply to you yes is that what you guys want yes that's exactly yes. uh tavon says her mic is not working so her question she says she has a she's doing a virtual tell-all book it's not written down at all because of it of a previous breach Okay, it's n okay. What medium is it on? You have it where? Or you said it's a virtual. So, Tavon, type that in your chat. How is so it it's saved? Not How is it saved, Tavon? I think you said it's a writing. previous. Okay, let's go with the fact that it's a previous breach, meaning someone else has infringed upon you. If someone has infringed upon you, now you want to sue them for your rights. You need to uh, file an infringement uh, suit against them, but you need to have registered that product and your recovery will not start until the date of your registration. So that means, let's say, if they've collected um, $50,000 or $100,000 from, from uh, January uh 2020 january 2019 till the day that you fill in your application your recovery is not going to start boo, until you actually have submitted the application for your recovery for damages that's the sad thing mm -hmm. okay miss monica thank you how do we get in touch oh. with you for publishing well I'm not doing much publishing. I, I want you, I want to refer you to Dr. Rosie Milligan um, of Milligan Books, who um, is my hero, who got me started in publishing a, um, literally now at this point, a line of, of, of books, um, medical thrillers and children's books. And so she got me started. And um, this is her event. And so I would refer you to Milligan Books Publishing. And now that Dr. Well, not now, because she's been around forever, not forever, but for so long, because she's my hero and I've attended Black Writers on Tour. When I was pregnant with my book, and then I literally gave birth in one of her uh, in one of her events and now I'm probably walking along as a senior baby now but I got started, <laughs> I got started with her okay, so, senior baby. yeah so now she's really grown even more I mean of course she's always growing but she was even big then and that was over 20 years ago but she has a big um a group of uh people that um, um okay. subscribe to her and she will be able to tell you literally who would be best to connect with? And wouldn't this be wonderful where we're not selfish or greedy, where we can say the person who's going to do bet, you know, give you your better service is going to be Miss um, Crystal Mitchell here because she does podcasts and she will be able to tell you how to get in that. And so this is what networking is about. So I want to start you off, senior baby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to embrace that. So I'm going to start you off with referring you to Dr. Milligan so that she can connect you up with the right, you know, with the person <laughs> right. that will um, help you. Now, my book includes 10 diagrams. Are the diagrams protected by copyright um, of the book? Yes, but no. Let's see. Who <laughs> is the originator of the diagrams? And so it has to be the 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 claimant's original work of art 
So if the art, let's say literally behind me, I cannot claim these uh, uh, pictures. Uh, well, okay, I can claim that tiger. I cannot claim that tiger. I can only sell it, but I'm not the copyright because I'm not the copyright owner. I'm not the illustrator. But look at this right here, um, this Jeep and those girls back there. Those are diagrams that I hired an artist to do. I'm not an artist. I do stick figures. And so those are my graphics. Now, they're my work. It's my book. I can claim it because I did what's called a work for hire. So what you would have to do is um, have someone uh, that you would have to have a contract um, for a work for hire. So it would be protected to the claimant, the owner. If you are the owner of it because you're the illustrator or you could be the owner of it because you are the true legal claimant because you have a legal right to it because you have a contract with that person. And that's the other thing that we would get to in the class is what about writing a contract for someone to do a, a product or service for you? Let me give you a case in point. I have, um, if you could go to my website or go to my YouTube channel or whatever, and um, there's a, um, an audio that is, this is Vision Harmony Productions. And that's what it <laughs> says. And so it has, of course, my scrolling butterfly or whatever. Um, but I'm using the voice of an actually Grammy Award winning uh, artist. Thank you very much. And I paid him to do my trailer for me. And so he lent me his voice to do my, um, uh, uh, my intro. I have a right to it. It's a very narrow right to his work because that's his, his voice is his instrument. And because it's his instrument, he can now, um, uh, um, lend, he can now, uh, lend, not lend it out, sell his voice and he writes uh, up a, a work, an invoice, um, literally specifically that tells you how much of a right you have to it. Let's say NBC. Doom, doom, doom. Well, okay, so I'm not a singer, but <laughs> guess what? You can't put that chime on your YouTube channel without YouTube coming at you and say, take it down, that's not your voice because that is an infringement of NBC and oh, they will come after you. So you can actually have a trademark of a voice, of a sound, of a symbol. It's an identifier. And so that's the other, the things that I wanna get into when we do our class. We're down to one minute. And so I want everyone to please make sure that um, you have put in your name, your email address, and the telephone number so that we can do, I'm going to call it um, uh, intellectual property rights uh, 102 because we're going to go to the next level. Because normally when I do this presentation uh, for uh, Black Writers on Tour, we go around and I hit and miss with various stuff and people, you know, I want to apply it to whoever's doing what so that you can get your information. But I've been telling Dr. Milligan that we want to go to another level so people can take it and apply it. So wouldn't that be a good thing? Now you're going to get 45 minutes is going to be pertinent to you. It's a free service where I'm going to help you with um, uh, your uh, application for your copyright. We're going to just touch on trademark because that's a whole nother, um, a whole big thing, but save yourself your $35, save your Zoom, uh, you know, your legal Zoom fee that you're going to pay somebody $250 or whatever to do something that you, I'm going to teach you how to do yourself. Okay. Um, it is 12 o'clock. You may have another session to go to. Um, so make quick, sure that I, have you... to, I have to leave real quick because I'm getting ready to do a session, but okay. I would love to have you as a guest uh, on my podcast. Um, and also, um, I, I I interact with a lot of biz, small businesses owners that have a uh, content that needs to be copywritten. So I, I have your phone number there. Okay. And good. I will reach out to you and okay. we will chat offline. And okay. this has been sure. fantastic, Monica. And you did fantastic, even though you had some technical dis difficulties. I think the people we here. We all have, have to push through this virtual era. And let me tell you, I, I, was, I didn't want to do it. But for Dr. Milligan, I'm, I would do anything for her because she's right there. 
So you guys, well, I'm going to leave this up for a few seconds so we can make sure that you have your um, information so that you can get your full hour. We're going to go to intellectual property uh, 102 because now you guys have graduated from the beginning class. And so, you know, everybody that's here, we're, we're moving on. You're pregnant and now you're going into the third trimester. Yeah. Time to deliver. Okay, so let me copy your names. And send it to Dr. Milligan too, okay? Because I think that she's going to want to be the one to generate the invitation. Okay, you guys? If you can hear me. Thank you. We managed to get through yeah. this. We're going to get through thank this you. all. Huh? Thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm scrolling because I want to mark this down, but I'm officially yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. All right.